it's difficult to understand um, how and, and why um, they they could thought they could justify doing it without any warning. Um, the usual process that the government follow when they want to change the immigration rules um, is they lay the proposed changes before Parliament. Normally, it's a minimum of 21 days before any changes are implemented. And the idea of that is to allow Parliament to debate those changes to ensure that Parliament have at least some oversight and ability to kind of influence changes to the rules. Um, so the, the fact that it was done circumventing that um, and published initially via Twitter um, after a report had been leaked to the press um, the day before, you know, is again, I'd just say, very concerning. And it leaves a lot of people in a, a difficult position. The challenges that people had um, been making their plans, um, a lot of people were looking to move to the UK this summer with a view to their children starting school you know, in September of this year. Um, you know, that's now no longer an option. Um, there are gaps now left in the, in the available immigration routes. So if you're a family, you want your children to be educated in the UK um, and either both of the parents want to move so the parent of a child at school visa isn't available um, or if the children are over 12 years of age is now very difficult. Um, but, but I think you know, our job as, as immigration lawyers is to look at all of the routes that are available there are still options for people to move to the UK for work, for study, to establish a company um, where they're globally talented. And, and I think it's a case of looking at all the options and, and finding the best route for them. But I do fear that, that this leaves a gap um, and you know, the impact of it is, is being felt across, across the world. So it's not just the limited number of countries that, the, um, that Priti Patel has suggested were high risk. You know, there's a lot of people um, from countries where there are no security concerns, um, where their wealth is legitimately derived and can be properly sourced, um, who, who are uh, unfortunately suffering as a result. At least for the time being, it seems clear that the intention is to move away from purely passive investment. Um, whether or not there's any kind of backtracking on the extent of that, I think the key thing here is the government need to find a way um, for people to move to the UK, you know, who have legitimate wealth um, that can be properly evidenced, um, who are able to make a positive contribution to the economy. Um, and I think that that can be done through passive investment. Um, but I think the focus appears to be on, on looking at the innovator route and, and, and maybe adding within the umbrella of the innovator route um, ways in which investment can be made that does have a tangible benefit um, which can lead to a visa or, as an innovator on that basis so potentially um, you know a, a less active um, investment than the current innovator and startup routes require um, but which I think can, can the government are satisfied clearly shows some benefit to the economy so I think they're looking at, at things like job creation there's no question that invest in the UK listed companies, um, you know, equities and, and corporate bonds are of benefit. But I think it's clear, you know, perhaps politically um, in the current climate, what they're looking for is more tangible benefits, perhaps that are more easily justifiable. Um, it's it's a, an immigration route that has attracted lots of attention. Um, you know, the people's views are not always positive in relation to it. And I think for the route to continue, one of the things that's going to be important is, is that the government can show um, that there is a tangible benefit.